everyone. Welcome back to our Seed Weekly Show. This is Anson. And this is Ming. So what do we have this week? So let's take a look here. So this is the brand new Argon M.2 case for Raspberry Pi 4. And this is one of the coolest case out there in the market as yeah. it actually supports the, it builds the M.2 SATA enclosure into one case. So you probably won't see much difference from this version compared to the last version as it has a similar uh, outing. So it still keeps the slick look and with the GPIO on top like this. But it actually built the uh, SATA converter board, motherboard underneath. If we just take this uh, converter here out and open it up, you can see that this top area is the, is the Raspberry Pi, Pi 4 with the motherboard converter here. And the bottom layer, where it's here, it can put like a, you can put the M.2 SATA here, right here. And with the simple USB 3.0 conversion, you added a SATA M.2 to the Raspberry Pi 4. And it's actually really unique when you put it together like this. And make sure the USB ports are aligned and you just literally just put the USB back like this. And now you have a really slick look of the Raspberry Pi 4 setup. And the appearance is really cool. Yep, and it's all metal, and so it's really good for heatsink. So, what's next? Oh, here comes the BBC Micro Beat. And many people may be familiar with BBC Micro Beat. Last week, they released a new version of it, which named BBC Micro Beat V2. And compared to the previous version, the V2 Micro Beat has a speaker and mass microphone. Yep. Yeah, and it also supports BLE. And compared to the previous version, its RAM is expanded to 512 KBs and the RAM is 128. It's a lot of space to use and making your project building more possibilities. Cool. Mm -hmm. And this one is under the pre-order situation and now you can go to our bazaar to buy the page and all order will be shipped in the mid of November. So what is the update on the software side? So we have been developing the firmware for wide terminal. As you know, the Wi-Fi firmware has been out there for a while and recently we are working on the Bluetooth out firmware and recently we just released the first version of the Bluetooth firmware and actually it's working quite well. So does it mean you can use the Wi-Fi and BLE at the same time? Well, that's the problem right now. For the current firmware, for the Bluetooth firmware, it actually uses what we call the ERPC. And in, in this firmware, it can only work with a Bluetooth right now. Whereas the Wi-Fi, the original firmware, it uses AT command to communicate between the uh, wi wireless core to the Sandy 51. So one uses ERPC and the other uses AT command. So the two firmware does not work together right now. But we actually work in the ERPC version of the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. right now and it should be out by the end of this month. Oh, that's so good by, by by then we can use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth together. Okay. So let me just show you some of the really interesting BLE demos, which mm -hmm. makes it more interesting than just the Wi-Fi. And we actually ported the blink what we call the Blink library into, into compatible with a uh, Y terminal. So let me just, let me, I've already loaded the INO program to the Y terminal. So if we just connect that and it will just start running. And what I want to show you here is, and if I just open the Blink app and show you the BLE function, so let's just connect BLE device and let's find, there should be, see, there should be a device called Blink, which is the white terminal and I click OK and that connects the BLE to the white terminal. So now you see it's connected and it says Blink connected and the Blink is the white terminal device and let's click OK and this demo actually transmit the onboard accelerator data to the Blink app. So now if I just make some movement, 
and you see and it's it's sending the accelerator data to the uh, my mobile phone via BLE protocol so this makes it a lot more interesting than just the Wi-Fi firmware and it uses the BLE so you can do demos that use BLE with Wi-Fi so that's one of the demo so this is also another BLE example and so I just loaded the example program to the white terminal so let me just plug this groove LED stick into one of the group port well the digital port and just reset and also use the blink app so first to also connect the blink device here so now it's connected again to the blink app so just click ok and just click the play button to go live and now it's actually live so if i drag this rgb onto this oh wow it actually changes the color so you've gained yourself a ble control led stick using white terminal and also it actually it displays the auto same color on the white terminal screen So this could be quite fun and this because it's actually transmitted in BLE you don't actually need to have a USB cable you can use the wide terminal battery battery chasers to use that for power so it actually can be more neat than this so yep and it's actually pretty stable I've tested this under in 24 hours and it actually running quite quite well wow. so yep so you can actually use Y terminal and BLE to make your own RGB for your desktop setup. And we talk about group 10 years anniversary activities last week. And now we are keeping receiving many wonderful posts on Twitter, Instagram and our email as well. Just a very warm reminder that our submissions will be closed before October 30. So if you have any story about Groove, anything you would want to share with us, just find us on the social media or send us an email or post a reply on the forum. And we are looking forward to your sharing. So if you need more information about how to assemble this case or more information about Microbit V2, please check our last two videos. Mm -hmm. Happy time flies quickly. And it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye.